All right? You guys have seen my top 10 best movies of, of 2016, and thank you so much for uh, watching it. And by the way, j j just in case, if you haven't watched it already, I'll put the link to it down in the, in the description below, just in case, if you haven't seen it. But for now, let's get right into it. Let's get into my top 10 worst movies of 2016. <sighs> so yeah, uh, and by the way, just to clarify with you guys, if you enjoyed any of, of these movies on, on my list, fantastic. I respect your opinion. But, but, but for me, I couldn't stand any of these movies. They were painful. But yeah, if you enjoyed any of these movies, fantastic. I'm glad you did. Okay, so let's get right into it. Let's, let's get to number 10. And number 10 is Batman v Superman, Donna Justice. This was my number one most anticipated movie of, of 2016. And boy, did it disappoint. <sighs> so, what made Batman v Superman bad? Well, the story was confusing and was all over the place. Jesse Eisenberg was badly miscasted as Lex Luthor. Like, he was acting like he was from a Looney Tunes cartoon. Like, it was ridiculous. And, and, and I will say this about Batman v Superman. Ben Affleck was sweet as Batman. I, I, I will say that. Ben Affleck killed it as, as Batman. But for the most part, Batman v Superman was one of the most disappointing movies I've ever seen. And I should have renamed it Batman v Superman, Disappointment of Justice. Alright, so let's get to number 9. And number nine is the Angry Birds movie. Hey, re remember Angry Birds? Remember when that was a thing? No? Well, this movie will remind you that it was once a thing. Okay, a Angry Birds is one of my favorite mobile games of all time. Yeah, it's outdated, but it was fun while it lasted. Come on. And yeah, was this movie good? <laughs> no. Okay, this movie wasn't awful. It wasn't like one of the worst movies like it wasn't like one of the worst a animated movies I've I've ever seen. It was just stupid, obnoxious, and just bad. And one of the reasons that makes the Angry Birds movie on its list is because this movie is a kids movie. Uh, and the jokes in this movie were surprisingly inappropriate for a kids movie. Like for example, there's a scene where an Angry Bird gets shot from a slingshot and it blows up, and one of the characters says. That blows, but in a good way, you know, for kids. And I will say this, there was one redeeming quality from the, from the Angry Birds movie, and that's the animation. The animation was actually pretty good. I will, I will give it that. But overall, it was such a stupid movie. Okay, so moving on to number eight. And number eight is once again another disappointing movie, and that's Hail Caesar. Hey, remember when the Coen brothers made good movies? Remember those days? Fargo, The Big Lebowski, No Country for Old Men. Well, this movie had none of that magic. The Coen brothers, I don't know what they were thinking while making this piece of crap. Okay, I remember in my review, I gave Hail Caesar a B plus. I, I remember saying it wasn't great, it's good. But it's one of those movies that, that just gets worse and worse every time you think about it. And one of the reasons that Hail Caesar sucks is because the story was messy, unfocused, it it's a comedy and it wasn't even that funny. I, and I, I will say this: uh, the would that it works so so simple scene that was actually funny. That was hands down the funniest part in the whole movie. And Shannon Tatum's dance sequence that was a good sequence. I thought that kind of I thought that was pretty charming and it was pretty cool seeing Shannon Tatum dancing scene. And uh, and it's just and Jonah Hill, Scarlett Johansson, and Shannon Tatum served no purpose in it whatsoever, even though Shannon Tatum had a pretty awesome dance sequence. Okay, so yeah, Hail Caesar lacked the magic that the Coen brothers once had in their movies like Fargo, The Big Lebowski, No Country for Old Men, and, and all those other great movies. And it's just a disappointing mess that was unfocused, unfunny, and didn't make any sense. Okay, so, so moving on to number seven. And number seven is Now You See Me Too. I actually haven't seen the first Now You See Me, but I just watched the second one just to... Just for the heck of it, and boy, it was pretty bad. Okay, it wasn't, it's not like one of the worst movies I've, I've ever seen, but come on, it was, 
It was pretty bad. Okay, what made Now You See Me too bad? Well, the story was too confusing and it didn't make any sense. And it was just boring. And uh, and Woody Harrelson's character, his character in the movie, has a twin brother. And good God, he was so freaking annoying. <sighs> If you guys thought Jar Jar Banks from the Star Wars prequels was annoying, oh no, he's nothing compared to Woody Harrelson's twin brother in Now You See Me too. So yeah, if you enjoyed the first Now You See Me, and if you didn't get a chance to see Now You See Me too but want to see it, don't watch it. It's not worth your time. But even if, but even if you did see it, and, and it, if you liked it, fantastic. I respect your opinion. But in my opinion, I couldn't stand it. It was so boring. Okay, so moving on to number six. And number six is yet again another disappointing movie, and that's Zoolander 2. Okay, the first Zoolander is one of my favorite comedies of all time. It's so funny, and it's so quotable. And it's one of those movies that's stupid, but it knows it's stupid, like the first Dumb and Dumber. And Zoolander 2, that was disappointing as hell. What made it bad? Well, the story was predictable. It wasn't even that funny, and... It's... Okay, Zoolander is one of those movies that did not need a sequel. And, yeah, it was great to see Ben Stiller back on the big screen as Derek Zoolander, but come on, it got pretty stupid after a few scenes. And, as much as I love Zoolander, I couldn't stand the second one. It was so disappointing. Okay, so, so moving on to number five. And number five is a sequel that is totally unnecessary, and that's Ice Age Collision Course. Uh, okay, I love the first Ice Age. It is one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, if I got a chance to review it, I would give it an A+. It's one of my favorite movies of my childhood and one of my favorite animated movies of all time. And the sequel just got sillier and stupider as they just went by. Uh, the first Ice Age is great. Like I said, a lot of people were divided with the second and third one. I thought they were alright. They weren't good, just alright, like C-plus movies. Then, then we got to the fourth one, and I was like, what are you doing, Fox? Just end it here. Just stop. It just, and then we got to the fifth one, Collision Course, and that is 100% unnecessary. The story was stupid. It was boring. It wasn't funny. Okay, yeah, the animation was pretty top-notch, but overall, IHA's Collision Course is another sequel that no one asks for, and... The, and and much and as much as I love the first Ice Age, I don't like the sequels, especially the especially Collision Course. So it's not worth your time. Okay, so moving on to number four, and number four is yet again a remake. Uh, I mean, remake. It, it's yet again another sequel that no one really asked for, but we got it anyway just for the heck of it. And that's Alice Through the Looking Glass. Okay, I don't hate the Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland movie. Yes, it's bad, but I don't hate it. Uh, and then and then I made a billion dollars and then we got a sequel and boy that sucked okay this movie could have been better because it was directed by james bobin who directed the last two muppet movies the muppets and muppets most wanted and i loved the last two muppet movies okay muppets most wanted wasn't as good as the muppets but i still enjoyed it for what it was but alice for the looking glass no <sighs> oh johnny depp when will you stop? Just, okay, after Pirates of the Caribbean 5 next year, just please stop. Just please. The story made no sense. It's just, okay, yeah, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Not worth your time. A sequel that is totally 100% unnecessary. And just because the last Alice in Wonderland made, made a billion dollars doesn't mean Disney has to make a sequel. Okay? Okay. Okay, so, so moving on to number three, and number three is a movie that I try to avoid, but I couldn't help but watch it, and boy, it was a plane wreck. Oh my gosh. And that's Norma the North. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Norma the North is one of the worst animated movies I've seen in recent memory. I tried avoiding this movie, but I did it just for you guys. I watched it just to get tortured for you guys. So yeah, Norman the North, what made it terrible? Well, 
The story was awful. The characters were not likable. It wasn't funny. I, yeah, it's a kids movie, but it's more aimed for kids who can't even speak the English language yet. So yeah, Norma the North, one of the worst anime movies I've ever seen. It's not worth your time. Don't watch it. Please. Please. Okay, so, so moving on to number two. And I thought about this movie for a while. I wanted this movie to be my number one worst movie. But then I watched my number one not too long ago. And I was like, yep, that's going to be number one, all right. Okay, so number two. And number two is Nine Lives. This movie actually had effort in making it. This movie was directed by the same dude who directed Men in Black, Barry Sonnenfeld. And it starred Kevin Spacey, Christopher Walken, Jennifer Garner, all these celebrities. And what is it about? Well, Kevin Spacey gets into an accident and he turns into a cat. <sighs> yeah, that's all I can say. Don't watch it. Don't ever watch it. Okay, moving on to number one. Oh my god, we're here. My number one worst movie of 2016. It's not Norma the North. It's not Nine Lives. So what is it? Well, a few hours ago, I watched a movie, and I was like, yep, that's going to be number one, all right. And yes, my number one worst movie of 2016 is Mother's Day. Oh, my God. This movie was atrocious. This was Gary Marshall's final movie he directed, and, and rest in peace, Gary Marshall. And boy, did he end his career, career on a high note? <laughs> no. This movie was not funny. The characters were awful, and it, it had an all-star cast. Jennifer Aniston, Kate Hudson, Julia Roberts, Jason Sudeikis. All these actors are so funny. What made them star in this movie? And... I don't usually do this with movies, but I turned it off after an hour. That's how... Excuse me. I, I turned it off after an hour. That's how bad Mother's Day was. It is not worth your time. It is one of the worst comedies I've seen in recent memory. I never thought I would say this, but I would rather watch Adam Sandler's Jack and Jill instead of this. That's an awful movie. Don't get me wrong. But it had Al Pacino in it. Come on. So yeah. And that's why Mother's Day is my number one worst movie of 2016. Well. I don't have to talk about those movies ever again. Yay. Okay guys. So that's it for my top 10 worst movies of 2016. And I have a question for you guys. What are your top 10 worst movies of 2016? Whatever they are. Comment below and let me know. And I'll see you guys get uh, again, tomorrow for my top 10 most anticipated movies of 2017. And by the way, if you want to see more videos, just be sure to subscribe.